So, good evening. Uh, thanks, all, thank you all for coming. Uh, tonight, we're very pleased to announce the launch of Dermot's new book, Sensory Issues uh, with, for Adults with Autism Spectrum Disorder, and also Kirsten and Dermot's new organisation, ASC, which you might have heard of, or maybe not. Uh, so we have a couple of speakers who will be talking about their experiences, but first uh, I'll introduce Dermot to you who's going to do a short talk about his new book, so take it away. Okay, thanks Cian. Uh Hello and welcome everyone uh, to what we hope will be an enjoyable and possibly even entertaining evening. Now we've already tried to buy all of your affections, as you know, by giving you sweets and stuff like that. So we hope you're already on side with everything that's happened. So, um, Just to say, uh, this isn't something I would do very regularly, but this is the proudest night of my life. Um, there's lots of reasons for that. Um, it's not just because of the book. Um, I suppose it's the experience of sharing the podium uh, with people beside me and sharing this occasion with everyone else. Uh, with autism, with Asperger syndrome in the audience, as well as friends and family. Uh, I'm gonna keep my piece brief, uh, you'll all be relieved to know, as I know everyone will be very anxious to get stuck into the Jaffa cakes and the rest of the sweets and stuff, so. Um, the structure of my talk will be that I'm going to say uh, a few important thank yous at the start, uh, then outline what the book is about, and then read a short excerpt. First, the thanks very much to the City Library, and especially Patricia, uh, who's done an amazing job here uh, facilitating the launch and helping to make the organisation of the night so easy. Also for printing stuff off for me and generally doing things, uh, IT based things that I'm uh, incapable of doing. Uh, to all of our friends and family for being here, showing their support over the years, I suppose especially to my parents Sean and Kit and Siobhan as well. Uh, thanks to Bridget in advance for manning the book selling table. So, um, Lastly, thanks to Key and David, Emer and Kirsten for agreeing to talk this evening. Uh, the reason I love my work is that I get to interact with the most interesting, resilient and brave people possible. And I have so much respect for you all. And you know I said all this to you last night as well when there was no audience. So you know I mean it. Uh, for having the courage to stand up and talk tonight. And to everyone else I work with for the courage and resilience you show every day. Okay, so the purpose of the bo this book was to discuss sensory differences and the impact they may have on the lives of people with ASD of all ages. In the course of the years I've been working with people with ASD, it had become increasingly clear that sensory issues played a very significant part in their lives. A lot of this was negative, but some was positive. My aim in the book was to outline the difficulties as well as the positives and to suggest practical strategies that people could employ in order to minimize the negative impacts in whatever environments, be that school, college, work or home. The book is designed to be read by people with ASD as well as their husbands, wives, partners, families and support workers and also those in the wider community such as teachers, GPs and nurses. Everyone will at some point have interactions with a person on the spectrum and it is in everyone's best interest to be informed. Though the book title says it's for adults, there's relevant information for all ages. My overall aim was to write a readable book that is accessible to everyone without too much clinical terminology or dense language. I also wanted the book to try to explain what the senses are, how they work in orchestra with each other, and what the implications might be for someone if they didn't. While all of that might be very interesting, I felt that the book should also suggest some practical advice that people with sensory issues could apply to their own lives. Therefore, the chapters cover everything from how to manage the sensory implications of the school, college and work environment, to the part sensory issues may play for parents, in relationships and in cyberspace. I also explore the ways in which our memories are linked to our senses. For example, a particular song may remind us of a place, a time, or a person in our lives. My fervent hope is that the book will be useful to people of all ages, uh, and as I said, at various stages in their lives. Obviously, I didn't write for financial gain, and the kind folks in my publishing company uh, have helped me massively in, in that cause. Uh, in conclusion, most of us uh, never think about how we understand the world around us, or that our understanding of the world around us comes from our senses including sight, smell, taste, and touch. So here's an excerpt from the beginning of the book, which I hope may serve as an exercise in beginning to understand the importance of the senses that most of us take for granted, as well as how our memory is linked to our senses. Wherever you currently are, sit down and take stock of your surroundings, so you're, you're halfway there already. Um, begin, begin by looking at what is around you, and then listen to what sounds you may hear. As you are sitting, take note of your heartbeat and breathing. Are there any smells that you can detect? 
uh, such as sweets and biscuits and such? Or is there a lingering taste in your mouth of the same? Uh, when taking in your surroundings, do any of the sights, sounds, smells or tastes remind you of anything? Uh, if so, how does that memory make you feel? Well, actually, you've just created a new memory, so from now on, biscuits and sweets are going to remind you of the uh, City Library and the book launch and the AC launch. This exercise is a simple way of beginning to become more aware of the array of sensory systems that work together in our bodies at any given time. So what I'd like you to do is imagine how your life would be impacted if you experienced the world in a different way and this was not understood by those around you. Thanks very much everyone for coming. Thanks very much for listening. Um, the very last thing I'd just say is um, I think there's too many divisions in the world of autism. There's too many divisions in the world generally. In the world of autism, um, in particular, I think it's very, very, very unhelpful. What I like is the idea that we're all here tonight to look at, okay, some of the challenges people with autism ha have, but also the positive aspects of autism. Uh, thanks very much uh, again to everyone, and I'll hand you now back to Kian. Thank you very much, Dermot. You're welcome. I couldn't agree more with you, by the way. Uh, so now we have David, who will be talking about his experiences with Asperger's and anxiety and his work with Dermot. Okay, thanks Keen. Uh, uh, hello, good evening ladies and gentlemen. I'm a little nervous speaking, so please bear with me. I was diagnosed with having Asperger's syndrome in early 2015. Through all my secondary school years, I, was, I avoided every kind of physical activity as a racing heartbeat caused me a lot of panic attacks manifested in heightened sensory hearing perceptions, which were always debilitating. I dreaded uh, the thought of a panic attack coming on as in the moment I felt there was never a way out. Therefore, I removed myself from situations rather than having to face another panic attack. By not partaking in any physical activity, I lost out on the social activities they would bring. So I went through secondary school with very low self-confidence as I felt I didn't fit in with the rest of my peers. I had very few friends as a result. I didn't have a reference for what anxiety was until I moved to Dublin a few years ago for a job where I became overwhelmed with anxiety. When I came back home to Cork afterwards, I got, uh, my anxiety got worse to the point where I couldn't leave the relative security of my house for the best part of a year. Luckily, I have a therapist uh, who put me in touch with Dermot to work on overcoming this anxiety I had. Dermot pointed out that it'll take effort and determination on my part to overcome anxiety, which I was eager to do so that I could lead a normal life for myself. I have learned that you can't get rid of anxiety, but that you can manage it. You can learn to better manage your anxiety the more times you face it, and the best way out is always true. Today I have a social life where I've, where I've been able to build my self-confidence socially. Lastly, Asperger should not be seen as a label, but just a part of you as a person. I wouldn't be where I am today without the support of my therapist Anna, my key worker Karen, and Jimmy, who have all played a big part in me overcoming my anxieties. If anyone wants to come up to speak to me afterwards, feel free to do so. Thank you very much, and now I'll hand you back to Keane. Thanks, David. So, now we'll have Kirsten who's going to talk about ASC, so please. Okay, so my name is Kirsten Hurley. Quite a lot of you know me already or you've heard me speak before, but to those of you hello, who don't know me, um, the first thing I want to say is how incredibly proud I am of Kian and Ema and David, because I know what it feels like to be terrified of speaking in front of people and to see them able to stand up and do it, like it brings back memories for me. Anyway, <laughs> um, yes, so I'll start my presentation now. I've got my emotional bit over. <laughs> uh, you might have noticed there were images behind all of us, and you might have been thinking, why was there an image of a wolf or uh, a whale? We had uh, two lovely beaches, actually. I think me and Kian are actually so similar um, in the way we kind of experience things. We both ended up picking beaches. But the point for that was, first of all, so you had something to look at apart from us, which would help lower our anxiety somehow. Um, and also, whoops, I just built my water. I also have dyspraxia, which is kind of problems with motor coordination, so I've just shown you all that as well. Um, yeah, I did mention I was diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome, didn't I? That's a, a key point. Um, so, images. Why are there random images? What we wanted to do is give you a sense of how kind of disorientating it can be if there's information that other people understand and that you don't. So you might have been wondering why those images were there, and we all knew why they were there. And it's only when you know, I've explained it to you why we had them there that it kind of makes sense, and that's kind of what 
having Asperger's can feel like, that everybody else has an understanding of social interaction that you don't have. So that was the point behind that. So context, you have context now. So I'm going to explain what ASC is. It's an autism spectrum consultancy. It's an organisation that David and myself have put together and it's a formalisation of work that we've been doing together already. So why did we choose the word ASC or the acronym to be pedantic about it? Um, ASC, obviously, autism spectrum consultancy. Um, the fact that you can see it as ask which is helpful for websites and also for Twitter. But I think the most important um, reason that we chose ASC was um, when we talk about autism and autism spectrum disorder or ASD, you have the word disorder there. And for a lot of people with autism or Asperger's syndrome or ASD, they can feel that the word disorder is quite upsetting or demeaning or very negative. So we will try and use the term autism spectrum condition, which is a more neutral way of phrasing things. Um, and then you have ASC. So, as I said, why are you laughing at me? Okay. It's not you, it's not you, I promise. Okay. We, we were talking about last night how we're probably all going to dissolve into a fit of giggles because, you know, nerves and everything. Well, we've to get ourselves Yeah, you guys so. have, and then I get up and get all emotional and start <laughs> wanting to cry because I'm so proud. Um, <laughs> so, sorry, just go back to that. So, education, advocacy, and support are kind of the, the three main things that we want to do. Uh, in terms of education, we've already been doing this, but we want to continue on and expand doing workshops and... Um, We've done workshops for CIC and Ruth and Laura here. Thank you for coming. Um, and also in Dundalk IT. Um, we've also been doing conferences. So we did a conference for guidance counsellors to give them a sense of how they can support people with Asperger's syndrome. We also gave a conference, a presentation to Angara Shekana and explaining how um, autism can impact on you if you're being interviewed in a, a situation, what kinds of things you can do to get the best out of an interview um, if you're interviewing a victim who has Asperger's syndrome or autism spectrum disorder. And then also general autism awareness training and um, raising understanding. And we'll have a website which will be a big part of this. Um, another aspect that we're particularly excited about is um, advocacy work. So a lot of people with autism or Asperger's can have great difficulty in, in work or employment. So being able to have an advocate that can maybe work with your employer to kind of negotiate how to get the best out of employment and be best supported. And um, the same goes for school and college. Um, like I, when I first went to college, I didn't have a diagnosis of Asperger's syndrome, but then when I got that diagnosis, it literally changed my life and my husband's sat there right now and he knows how much it's changed. Um, I didn't think I'd get so emotional. This is taking me by surprise. Um, Take some water. Thank you. I'll try and spill it just now. Yeah, I'll try not to. <laughs> but having people in, in college and school that understand what Asperger's syndrome is and um, can help you when you're trying to kind of negotiate all the difficulties that there are in college. It can be a massive help, and I know that personally, so we're, we're really excited to be able to do this work with other people. Um, and the criminal justice system is something that we're particularly interested in it as well, because um, it can be very frightening um, for anybody to be in a situation where you're interacting with people in the criminal justice system. So if you have Asperger's syndrome as well, there's, there's uh, so many things that can go wrong. Um, I've had the experience myself where um, I was driving in the car and I find it quite difficult to understand people's gestures and their meaning. So this guard was trying to stop me, but I, I'd interpreted the situation that there was an accident. So I was like, I don't want to drive past that. So I turned around and drove off and then they chased me with the lights flashing and everything. I was like, you know, so that was just one example of how you can completely misinterpret something and get into a, a bit of trouble. I hadn't done anything wrong, so... It was okay in the end, but it was still quite frightening. Um, <laughs> finally, uh, support. So um, 
I have a son with autism, he's eight now, and I know as a parent when you walk in and someone says to you that your child has autism, it can be a staggering experience. And for a lot of people, like, people don't know what that word means. Like, what does it mean when your child has autism? So I think a really important part of what we're going to do is be support for families when they get that diagnosis. Um, so family supports, but also for people with autism and Asperger's themselves, to be able to explore what that diagnosis means and to talk to somebody else who is either on the spectrum or has a great understanding can be, I think, hopefully, a, a really positive thing that we can continue to do. So that is ASC. Um, we're going to all mill around afterwards. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that. So thanks. Okay. So uh, thanks, Evan, for coming. Um, I know I can speak on behalf of all of us that... Uh, we're greatly, we greatly appreciate everyone for coming. Uh, I'd like to thank Patricia Looney and all the staff at the City Library for facilitating tonight. I'd also like to thank my parents uh, for coming. They've been a massive support to me and I can't really put into words how much they mean. Uh, so, now I'm getting emotional. Um, so there's tea and coffee available and you can mingle and everything like that. Also, to reiterate, um, if anyone wants to have a chat with any of us, no problem at all, please feel free to, we're happy to chat. Um, Dermot's book is also available, I'm given to believe. Apparently, yeah. Apparently, yeah, yeah. So, um, so thanks again for coming and uh, enjoy your evening. Thank you.